Uh, so today the interview that I have is going to be with AC, uh, also known as Cam. You've probably seen him in the chat. And uh, he is part of the Gen Sokyo uh, Guild and is probably one of our more uh, premier uh, PVPers that, uh, that I'm aware of. And uh, today he's going to share some of his knowledge. I've got some questions I want to ask him because as much as I like to think I know what I'm doing, I really don't. And I've uh, probably made Cam uh, cringe many times uh, bringing in some of the team compositions that I have. So we're going to pick his brain today, figure out what we can all do a little bit better, and hopefully uh, we'll all learn a little something here today. So Cam, welcome. Thank you so much uh, for being uh, making taking time uh, out of your day to be here. Thanks for having me. You're very welcome. So uh, correct me if I'm wrong now, uh, what part of the... Um, what part of the world are you in? You are in the UK or where are you? UK. Okay, very London good. London specifically. London specifically. Excellent. And uh, how long have you uh, been playing Dungeon Boss? Um, I think it was um, Christmas. When was the first Ice Bloom event released? That probably, well, was that? Yeah, that was right around the Christmas time. You're correct. So. Yeah, because I remember joining and the first event I saw was that. And my first unlock was Ice Bloom. You've, uh, I asked you if uh, you've always been a fan of PvP or if that's something that, uh, that you got into specifically for Dungeon Boss. Um, I, I guess in games, PvP has always been my thing. I've never been much for campaign, apart from Dungeon Boss, because it requires a lot more strategy. Okay, so very good. And that's, and that's something that you prefer as a gamer. Yeah. Okay. Um, so since the time you've played, you started playing, do you think Dungeon Boss PvP has evolved adequately with the game, or do you think that maybe it's been cast aside in favor of other game elements, or as it stands now, would you say that it's balanced? I feel like when I first joined, PvP was slightly unbalanced with the... I think there was a whole thing with the um, defenders all four going first or something. Something stupid like that. I do. Did you like that or not like that? And I do remember that, um, and that's where uh, they, I know that they did get to go first, but they did change some things. And I thought PvP was a lot harder uh, before yeah, they made that change. I, I disliked the whole four defenders go first thing because there was a YouTuber called I Chase who made a team which absolutely destroyed every single team that ever played, and everybody used it in PvP. So it ended up uh, being the, like a dominating type of, um, of uh, basically a cookie cutter team that was indestructible. Pretty much. Very good. Um, well, I think it stands to reason uh, that being able to PvP without requiring your opponent to be online, uh, that probably makes the PvP pool more diverse and gives you more people to choose from. But knowing that, would you like to see a kind of live PvP battle available um, instead of playing just the AI of the game and in real time, or do you still like it the way it is? Or would you like to choose? What do you think? I'd, I'd quite like to see the, the real-time battles, but... It, they'd have to be friendly because if they were competitive, you'd have random people just deciding to leave you for 45 minutes waiting to carry on a match. Oh, I see. So, so, oh, and what if there was the implementation of, say, like a time frame? So uh, you only had three, I don't know, three minutes might be too short. But would you say something along the lines of like, you know, five minutes, the battle couldn't last more than five minutes? Would that be something you'd think would be good? I think if it was a uh, limited time per term per turn, like maybe two, three minutes per turn maximum would be a good idea. Okay. Yeah, I, I like that too. I think that, I personally think that'd be a lot of fun, but you, you say that would be good, but not to have it be competitive. Specifically, um, specifically we're talking about like just uh, friendly competition type stuff. Yeah. Cool. Um, when you PvP, do you find it easier to change your team to meet the defense tactic, or do you keep your team and continue to search for a defense that is weak against that preferred team? So you've picked your favorite little team, and then do you go hunting, or do you say, oh, this is a guy I want to get, so I'm going to go build a team that will counter that? Um, it really depends on the kind of teams I see. So if I see um, a low power to mediocre power defense, then I just use the typical team that I use constantly, which is Zen, Bramble, Black Diamond and um, Kira. That takes out in a, yeah, usually one turn. And if it's a powerful team, like a 75 or 100 crown win, then I tend to take out a more um, specific team. 
I see what you're saying. Okay. Yeah, very good. And I totally understand that. I, I personally, um, I have my team that I like to use and then I will refresh all day long until I find something that I can take out with it. But that's, that's me because I think, uh, for me, I like to favor the team that I'm comfortable using, but you probably are more diverse, uh, in your, in your comfort level. So that does make quite a bit of sense to me. Um, would you agree that uh, part of the PvP strategy uh, should include searching for more optimal players, or do you, or do you think that they should save the gold and uh, and give what the wheel gives us? So that kind of goes back to what I was saying. Do you do you think there's an appropriate time to do that then? I think you should absolutely search for teams that are worth attacking because you could come across like I did a team with four six star heroes, four six stars at level forty seven. And we're looking at a six-star Igorok, um, Yoko, Kai, full ascended. And you're just, and it's offering something like 18 crowns or something silly like that. And you just sit there and say no, and refresh for something way better for maybe double the crowns. So you, so you think it depends on what it is that you're after. If you're after gold, then you would find hunt for gold. If you're after cups, you're after cups. But it, you don't farm PvP for gold, though, do you? I mean, is that is that just I don't. A, you don't? I just use the scrolls from PvP to buy the gold from the shop every day. Very good. Um, so you said you've consistently gotten into the top five for your tournament bracket. And, and real quick, before I continue on with that question, what is the term, tournament bracket that you're in? What level? Um, level 49, and I think right now I'm in the second bracket, not the slow bracket. You're in the second bracket. Um, and I think that some of my subscribers would want to know, um, how many gems on average do you have to spend to not only get up into that top tier, uh, but also to defend that position on average? What do you spend for that? Um, normal point two tour tournaments, I usually spend about 20 to 40 gems a yeah, twenty to sixty a day, but I don't mind. I don't mind spending that many. And are those uh, gems that now? Do you typically buy gems, or do you run the the tower for those, and then use those specifically for your PvP? I run through the tower just in about half an hour. In about half an hour, okay. Um, is it safe to say that what's being offered as a tournament reward determines how fiercely you fight to get to the top, or are you always trying to be at the top no matter what the token prize is? I like to be at the top because I like to be seen as a <laughs> top PvP. -er. Sure. And, but when it comes to massive token offerings for the tournament rewards, it really depends on whether or not I'll go for the top spot. Like when there's 500 blessings instead of a, instead of Ponty tokens, I'd rather just sit back. And so what? So what's an acceptable position for you then if the tokens are something you don't want? Where would you, where are you comfortable being then? So you're not fighting to be number one, but you'll be you'll take somewhere between one and five. Yeah, if I'm not fighting for number one for a tournament, then I'll just stick to between one and five. And if people are really going for it, I'll just stay in top ten, top fifteen. Okay, and so those, that's an acceptable position for you at that point. Okay. Yeah, there was a point where people went for where there was a hundred tokens for Julius, and people went absolutely crazy. <laughs> and I was looking at people with like 80 battles within two days and I just said no I'm just gonna set this one out completely you're gonna let it go because it's not worth it probably by the time to catch up too, you're talking quite a bit of time so yeah um so then once you do reach that spot let's see uh, what, what is your strategy for maintaining are you checking uh, like every 10 minutes to see if anybody's getting closer or what, what are you doing to defend your position I usually just check back every two hours whenever I have a raid ticket go through that raid in about a minute or less, like 30 seconds if it's an easy team. And if it says I'm anywhere lower, then I'll probably either cash out a few gems to get some more raids or just sit back and wait till the end of the tournament and get the higher crown offerings. Okay, so there is, so you are, you do have a, a game plan set up to kind of maintain where you're at then. Yeah, it's a little something that I, I think you've seen it in our guild chats a lot of people saying they got sniped out of first. Yes. Where it's where pretty much at the end of the tournament, especially in the last like 20 minutes, you'll see you'll see pretty much every team is worth over 60 crowns. So people just go for those in the last few minutes of the tournament to take the first spot. Oh, no, okay. And that's uh, and that's something that you do, or you or that's what you see other people do. I sometimes do it, but I am. I mean, I have to get up at like five o'clock which is the normal time i do get up 
just to do it. So I, I do it occasionally. Occasionally. Okay. Um, assuming game development continues, and, uh, and we're not going to get on the discussion of how long Dungeon Boss will be around, but assuming that they're going to continue with the game development and how uh, and PvP will be a concern to that, where do you think Dungeon Boss PvP will end up in, in say, like the next six months to a year? Or, and what would you like to see changed specifically? Where I think it will end up is if the developers do something to rebalance the game from its current... $500 to max a hero state, then we'll be in a much more balanced position. And people will be more, a lot more happy, PvP will be slightly easier, but more fun. On the other hand, the way they're going right now, you're going to see every single team is a pay-to-win team, like that level 27 full six star team that we saw. So you think that the only people that are going to end up playing this game or, or uh, even uh, doing PvP is going to be people who are paying to win. So you think the FTPs are going, to be, are going to be gone? Do you think that the game is trying to phase them out? Um, well, the, the long-time free-to-plays or the, or the more experienced free-to-plays that have had a little bit more time on their hands to, do, to get progress in the game will be able to stick around. But I think the the pay-to-win players, the ones who have probably VIP 6 by level 10, are the ones who are going to dominate PvP Interesting. for the future. You think that will create an unfair advantage for any... So you think that anybody new coming into the game is probably never going to be able to compete without having to pay money to get there? Is well, I've actually looked into that myself. Um, with the right knowledge, so you, people who just look up the slow leveling guide when they first start, they could probably get a decent start because I have an ult with VIP zero, zero money spent, and it can place first place in every single tournament bracket right now. Interesting. And you, fifteen. That's a really interesting experiment. So, do you think you'll be able to maintain that as you climb up the levels, or do you think that's gonna you'll start to see you're not able to defend that position so much as you go on? I think at the speed it's going, it will be able to keep up because it's right now sitting at over a hundred something Pontifex tokens waiting for an unlock to get a four star at level 15. Okay. Um, I... Jay Rells also has an ult with a four star Bovis at level, I think, 13 or something. And so you guys are kind of experimenting with that then. That's, a, that's actually really interesting to know. And I think it says that at least uh, you're saying that there's a fighting chance uh, that somebody new starting the game will have an opportunity. I, I do hope so. That's what it seems like. Okay. Um, one thing I'd, uh, I definitely want to talk about here is bait teams, something I'm only vaguely familiar with. But just so that everybody understands, can you quickly describe what bait teams are designed uh, to do? And uh, what, are the, what are the typically three heroes that, we, that people might have seen? All right. So a bait team in, in its most basic form is a team of less than four heroes designed to work extremely well together to take out a team of four in a short period period of time, and the way the the point of it is the fact that the the less hero power, the less um, heroes you have on your your defense, is the less crowns you'll lose when you do you lose your defense. But when you win, you win a lot more. Okay. So it creates a massive advantage. And. Um... From from my own experience, it seems like when someone discovers a new bait team composition, it sort of proliferates between uh, throughout all of the dungeons. Like I, you know, consistently saw when it was newer, um, the Black Diamond, uh, Masuda, and uh, Rocky configuration, and so those were almost uh, almost every other battle that I would come across. Um, but now, <clears throat> and I'll try to find one here real quick. Yeah, somebody just said find. A bait team. This could be a consideration for that. This uh, this is Kai and um, Ice Bloom, and then Zom. But typically, we'll see. So this is what an example of one would be. Although I, I wouldn't be able to say whether this that is good is. or not. Would you say this is good? I think it's it's a pretty good team. I mean, it's kind of it's a weird one. You rarely see it, but at higher levels, it's a lot more viable. Okay. So let me see if I can find something a little more streamlined here. Let's see if we can find something. Uh, and we're going to look at these a little bit more as we go on. I'm going to refresh like crazy. Here, let's see if this black diamond. No, that's a regular one here. Let's see if this Recently, is. With the influx of legendary hero features in the portal, you're going to see a lot more legendary heroes and bait teams now. 
And you think that that's uh, because of their power that they come across, or do you, or do you think it has? Well, here's an interesting one. See, I have, I don't think I've seen this one before. Uh, this is Black Diamond, Masuda, and um, Igarok. Is that something um, that you've seen often? I have never seen that one before. I've seen that once, I think. And the point of that one is, is that you could try and take a disabler for Igarok, but by the time Masuda and Black Diamond have gone, your your disablers are dead. Okay, so so and you're the, so this is a sort of a you've got one staller, one tank, and then two fast heroes trying to deal out a bunch of damage. Yeah. Um. So let's see. Uh. In in any case, uh, what do you think influences uh these bait teams? These the, what I, what in other words, like you have these cookie cutter uh, bait teams, uh, and these teams that seem to to become more popular but uh what do you think makes these changes because we've seen we see them evolve we see them change and so as an example uh we we have um ice yeah right black time and bogus and now we also have the furnace and ice pick uh, so what what do you think is the catalyst for these changes are uh, what are they i think what it what the changes what influences them are one guild chats two the players working out how they work and three the forums so with the guild chats you've got one person who finds a great bait team they post they've got 12 wins in a row and then everyone in their guild starts using them and then in turn people start using them in the game and they just spread and the light and same likewise happens in the forums well that's a scary bait team that's what i wanted to talk to you about that's kind of why i stopped on this could you maybe describe for the viewers why this mechanic is bad tell me tell me what your thoughts are on this what, the bait team mechanic, why it's bad? Yes. Because um, the reason the reason it's bad for PvP is the fact that people can essentially put in less effort for a larger reward. You're looking at plus four, so minus four for them for a loss, and maybe plus 20-something for a win, and that's double what they'd get with a normal team. So you're, they, they just get a bigger... They're oh. getting a bigger reward. Oh, no, no. No, that I realize. I'm sorry. I meant, uh, do you this particular team that's in front of us, the Black Diamond, uh, the Leonidas, and um, the Susumi, is this? I haven't seen this one either. Is this something that you would recommend, or is there something here that uh, that you would say is a good reason to put this together? Uh, the good reason to put this team together is absolutely, in my opinion, at most it's Leonidas. Simply because he can bring you bring back the hero that you're probably going to end up killing first, which you would probably recommend as being Black Diamond, simply because she's probably the the uh, the most dangerous out of those three. Or would you say Tasumi is the most dangerous? Well, both have issues when dealing with them. You've got on one hand Black Diamond, who's going to definitely pick off a hero per round, and then you have leonidas who boosts her damage so she's even more dangerous in the coming rounds and then you have soon who's just an overround or overall pesk once he gets to his third skill it's pretty much over and if you kill anyone except leonidas first when he does die they come back and get screwed again and so you're gonna have to fight them so this is almost a four hero team but built in with three if you don't play your cards right yeah, definitely, and it forces you to attack the other two because Leonidas is tanky, he has anti-magic, and he's going to live the longest, pretty much. Um, what is a, uh, now, I guess a question, two-part question, is this a bait team that you would use yourself, uh, but more more often, what bait teams do you currently see all the time, and uh, what is one that you would use uh, for your own defense? I wouldn't use this because my Zoom is like four stars right now. Okay. Um, and my Leonidas is only four stars, halfway to five star because of my level. Um, but I would, I yeah, I, w I would stay away from that team. But one I would use, and I've used before, is Black Diamond, Masuta, and Leonidas. Oh, you have used that, okay? Because um, Black Diamond pretty much always died first in that team, and when Leo died, she was for some reason guaranteed to come back every time instead of Masuta. So, okay, so that, and that's something, um, and that's a team that you, now what, what is, I guess the, a good question is right now, what bait team or what team do you have defending your dungeon as we speak? Um, right now, I am running Black Diamond, Misuta, Furnace, and Nub Nub, and I haven't been attacked in two days. Okay. Sadly. Sadly. 
Now, this is interesting right here uh, for Han Zolo. Uh, it looks like he has the beginning parts of a bait team that we typically see, Black Diamond, Masuda, and Rocky, but he also threw in Yokozuna. So does this still carry the threat of the bait team, but maybe with something added now, or do you still do you, did this weaken it by putting in Yoko? Even worse threat. Even more threat. So it's, it's more dangerous than, than it even was without Yoko. Yeah, because the point of that bait team was just to keep the power down to make it lose less crowns. And now it's a four-man. You've got Yoko hasted coming in with a sumo storm and then a taunt straight away. I think for those that are new to the game um, and, and don't PvP very often, what, what I was... What I hear people complain about is these all-color team quests that are required for their guild crown quests. And the dark hero uh, setup seems to be the one that people have the most trouble with. Of all the dark heroes, what are the four that you would say are the ones people should work on that would provide a better chance of success uh, out, of the, out of that element requirement? Right now, I always run Pontifex um, and Bronze on because they work so well together. And then anyone else on there is just a bonus, like Ella. Okay, and those and so those are the and those are the four you're recommending for them. Is there any? Um, I guess just as a pinch hit, I also hear Light. Is there any Light heroes you would recommend for the All Light quest? Black Diamond for one, pretty pretty much is like a first pick every time. Okay. Because she she dampens up the other heroes pretty much at the start of the round. Masuta can finish off a couple. And then from there, I usually add on Leonidas and um, Augustus just to keep up damage and healing. Very good. Um, since it would be impossible to give all the different hero defense combinations available in the game, uh, what is a good defense that a player could use for average heroes that don't really require legendary heroes or hard to get? type heroes, but that average PvP defense uh, heroes that could be used, what would you recommend there? Yeah, I was working on one recently, because I, mean, I know a lot of players at your level tend to use Furnace, Indigo, and Kai and whatever else, and it drives, I know Woodlore I was talking to, and it drives him absolutely crazy, because he sent me about 20 screenshots of the exact same team from all different people. Oh wow, okay. So I decided that a good idea would be to make a kind of less rare version of that, which was Indigo, because he's not as hard to get anymore. Echo, because you're pretty much guaranteed to get him now. Yokozuna, and then Nub Nub. And I've tried it. Yokozuna's completely unascended. And then I think Indigo's only one ascension, and the other two are fully ascended. And it's wiped out pretty much every team it's been attacked by. No, okay, so that's actually really good. Um, maybe later on I'll uh, reference that in another video so that uh, some people who may have missed this or that part might have got cut off by the cutouts, we can give them that opportunity to try to build those again. <laughs> um, so uh, when attacking a player uh, and examining the team that you're going up against, what is one single question that you think the player should be asking themselves before they dive in on that team? So uh, I'm looking at a defense, and I'm about to go in. What's the thing, the first thing that they should look for to decide whether to bail on that one or not? I think I probably look at the type of defense it is. So you'd have to decide to yourself: is it a stall team, is it a damage team, or is it just an outright, just a normal team? Okay, so you're check, you're trying to make sure that there's not some crazy design in here that can't be overcome by what you're bringing in. Yeah, you have to consider what kind of what kind of tactic they're trying to throw at you. Very good, and then build a team to overcome that, obviously. Yeah, because one of the easiest ones to get thrown, one one of the easy, easiest ones to get mistaken by is the Pontifex tactic, which drives me absolutely crazy every time because I forget. It's that when he dies, he shifts the entire team set up ahead by one. I actually so didn't know that. That's interesting. If he's in first place as their first normal and he dies, then their second normal becomes first, their third normal becomes second. I didn't know that. That's really it. it puts. I didn't realize it. T it shifts the entire turn base for the for the team you're attacking. Yeah, oh. and it's really frustrating. That it would be frustrating. I'm gonna have to watch for that next time. I have not seen that. That's why you warned me last time we were streaming. You said, don't go in on that one because you're going to get killed or you're, you're going to yeah. lose somebody. <laughs> so I have, uh, I have one last question for you, and I, I would venture to say this is probably the most important question I have to ask you all night tonight of all the things I've asked you. So I hope you're ready for this. 
I think a lot of people would like to know what hammers are for. Uh, and if you could explain, <laughs> if you could explain that, I would appreciate it. Hammers. <laughs> <laughs> because God, I have seventy thousand of them. I think and I'm still trying to figure that out. <laughs> Sixty-four thousand. They're for for the players that haven't worked this out. <laughs> apparently, a worker himself hasn't worked this out. They're for they're they're for repairing a dungeon. And. According to myself and half the player base <laughs> accessing the trade portal. <laughs> yes, exactly correct. <laughs> it will be the new form of currency for the trade portal. It will. <laughs> well, I. To trade your 6,000 <laughs> Aether for a Nimriel token, finally. <laughs> I love it. I absolutely love it. I want to thank you so much for getting up very early. For those of you that don't know, it's probably about 530 in the morning where he is at and he's made a special accommodation for me to get up and we could meet at the time that we could, you know, do something like this together. Uh, Cam, thank you so much. I would really like to apologize uh, to every one of the viewers who showed up today. And uh, that looks like to me uh, 20, 21 people are watching. I am so sorry for the bandwidth interruptions. Cam and I tested this extensively. I have a very good internet connection every other day of the week, except when I need to do something really super important, and I knew this was going to happen. I was, like, nervous about it all week, and Cam and I tested it, and then all best laid plans fall to waste, right? But uh, thank you so much for stopping by. I appreciate it. Uh, to all my viewers, thank you so much uh, for joining my very first but not last Dungeon Boss interview. And, Cam, I hope I can uh, get you to maybe come back when things are more stable and we can talk more about PvP. <laughs> Of course, I'd love to join you again. Thank you so much again. You guys have a wonderful morning, and uh, you have a great day. Thank you.